Hello. Hello and welcome to today's video. If you're new to my channel, I mostly post beauty related content on this channel, but I, much like you, am a dynamic individual with varying interests. So sometimes on this channel, I like to do get ready with me style videos where I share a story about a political, political? Historical figure <laughs> that has piqued my interest lately. Today, we're gonna be talking about Rome's maddest emperor, Caligula. So here's the deal with ancient Roman history. It happened a long time ago. Like Caligula, who we're talking about today, was literally born in the year 12. Our sources on that time period are not exactly the strongest, but I am going to share mostly just the details of Caligula's story that seem to be widely accepted as true or are, you know, pretty common amongst different retellings, different sources that I use, that type of a thing. Like I said, Caligula was born in the year 12 AD. And to fully understand Caligula's story as Rome's emperor, we have to start with two emperors back. So before Caligula, it was Tiberius. Before Tiberius, it was Augustus. He was struggling to find someone to appoint as his successor when he dies, right? Basically, somehow it kind of got to the point where his only option for a successor was this guy named Tiberius. And although on some accounts he was considered a war hero or like a, you know, military hero, he really was just this very like sullen, sulky, just like mm, kind of a person, you know, like nobody really liked him. Augustus didn't even like him. So I don't remember why, but it came to the point where Augustus's only option was to appoint Tiberius as his successor. But he did it on the condition that Tiberius adopt this other guy named Germanicus. And the idea behind that was that even if Tiberius ends up being a terrible emperor, if he adopts Germanicus, then Germanicus will be his successor. So no matter how bad Tiberius is, they'll ultimately end up in the hands of Germanicus. That was his plan or idea or whatever anyways. So Germanicus was also a military general and unlike Tiberius, he was very, very well liked. Not only that, but Germanicus was Caligula's father. Caligula was actually born with the name Gaius Julius Caesar Germanicus, but because Germanicus was a war hero, his kids, including little Caligula, grew up in like war camps with their father. And when Caligula was really, really young, they would give him like little soldiers uniforms so that he could dress up like a soldier. And the other soldiers in the military camps thought it was funny. So they gave him the nickname Caligula, which in Latin means little boots. And that my friends is about as cute as this story is gonna get. It's just all downhill from here. When Augustus died, like his body wasn't even cold before Tiberius moved in and took over as emperor. Not too long after Germanicus died under suspicious circumstances, it's pretty widely thought that Tiberius poisoned him or like had him poisoned or it was like very likely that Tiberius was responsible for Germanicus's death because Tiberius was very unpopular amongst the people of Rome. So I guess he was like threatened by Germanicus because Germanicus was very popular. So that's pretty much why Tiberius wanted to get Germanicus out of the way. But not only that, he took Germanicus's wife and their two eldest sons and he exiled them where they would eventually die of either starvation or suicide. And at this point Caligula was just a little kid. So I guess he he wasn't threatening to Tiberius. I think it was like Tiberius's mother that convinced Tiberius to spare Caligula's life, as well as his three sisters who will come up again later. Now, Tiberius was a real like bummer of a dude. Not only that, but he kind of hated being emperor. So he actually would frequently exile himself 
to these special villas that he had on the island of Capri where he lived for a long time, just kind of like ruling from afar, making his like lackeys do all of his work back in Rome for him. And while he was living out on the, the villas of Capri, he summoned Caligula to come live with him. And the way that the story is told is that it was like Tiberius's weird twisted way of trying to make him miserable basically, like by making him have to live with the man that literally tore apart his family and killed his parents, you know? He was like, I think 19 when this happened, when he had to go live with Tiberius. And the dynamic between the two was more of a like master servant type of relationship than it was like a grandfather grandson and it said that Tiberius as well as his little guards and everyone would often like kind of tease Caligula basically like goading him trying to get him to like lash out and like be pissed off about you know Tiberius having killed his parents and everything but Caligula wasn't stupid he like fully understood the situation that he was in so he played along with Tiberius and was like a good little servant boy for him. Now, some of the activities that Tiberius would partake in on his little villas in Capri were things like public torturings. It's It was said that he often engaged in, you know, it's a family friendly channel. So we'll say inappropriate acts with underage individuals. Now, since Caligula was so like, amenable and like, you know, really played along with Tiberius. Tiberius actually started to like Caligula. Caligula. <laughs> so Tiberius allowed Caligula to start participating in like his little orgies and his little torturings and, and all that kind of stuff. As the story goes, Caligula started doing these things and he like, enjoyed it. it. It wasn't like he was an unwilling participant. Seeing how much Caligula was enjoying doing all of these torturings and things, Tiberius had once said that he was nursing a viper for the Roman people. Now again, Tiberius had really grown to like Caligula while he had him living out on his villas with him. So Tiberius appointed Caligula as joint heir to the throne, along with Tiberius's other grandson, whose name was Jamelus, Jam Jam I think it's Jamelus, <laughs> I think. Now Caligula knowing this made efforts to like befriend and get close with some of the higher up guards for Tiberius so that when Tiberius died, Caligula could move in and take full control of the Roman Empire, not have to reign jointly with this other guy, Jamelus, Jamelus, whatever. And that's exactly what he did. Whenever Tiberius died and Caligula was all of 24 years old, he took over and became Rome's new emperor. Now, the thing is, the people of Rome did not like Tiberius. And so when he died and Caligula wanted to take over, it's not like he was met with much resistance like at all. Everyone was actually like pretty pumped. Number one, that Tiberius was dead. That was like the biggest thing, I think. But also Caligula is the son of Germanicus. And Germanicus was very well liked by the Roman people. You know, Germanicus was the man, Nicus. I'm so sorry for that, but also I'm keeping it in. Now they had Caligula, their beloved Germanicus's son, coming in to take over. And so yeah, everyone was pretty much just like, yeah, sounds great, let's do that, totally, yeah. Nonetheless, he went ahead and had his only rival to the throne, Jamelus, exiled where he would eventually die. So now Caligula is Rome's emperor, right? And I think it's so funny that a lot of these stories about these like crazy, evil, tyrannical rulers, they all kind of start somewhat similarly in that it'll be something along the lines of, you know, he actually did some good things. And that very much is the case with Caligula. 
the first six, seven months of his reign as emperor were actually quite blissful for the Roman people. He like lowered taxes, gave the people food. He did away with Tiberius's treason trials, which you might be like, Haley, what's a treason trial? I will tell you, just not yet, because it'll come back around later. And in like celebration of him becoming emperor, he held a whole bunch of really lavish parties and gladiatorial games and things like that for the people of Rome. So everyone was like freaking stoked to have Caligula as emperor now. Like he was very, very popular and it was like a really productive, happy change of pace from old farty butt Tiberius. Unfortunately, this period of, of happiness, blissfulness under Caligula's reign would not last long at all. So it was like six, seven months into him being emperor, he got really, really sick, like on the verge of death sick. And many retellings, different sources, historians, they'll always kind of refer to this moment as being like the turning point for Caligula, where like whenever he eventually got better, he was like a changed man. But things were like different after Caligula recovered from his little illness, but it's not like Caligula hadn't been a piece of garbage before he got sick. When he lived out in the villas with Tiberius, he like participated in the torturings and all of the debauchery that Tiberius was doing out there and he enjoyed it remember he was he was nursing a viper for the roman people whenever he did get better his senators like other government officials or whatever people that worked for him basically they went to visit him and when caligula was sick these guys had prayed to their gods whatever let our emperor caligula live and take me in his place so whenever caligula got better he thanked them for praying for his recovery but he followed it up by saying, you know, you prayed that I would live and that the gods should take your lives in place of mine, right? Basically what happened was he forced a whole bunch of his senators to commit suicide like on the spot because they had prayed that they could die so that Caligula could live. So he like asked them when they were gonna do that. And that is just sort of the starting line of all of the crazy things that Caligula did while he was emperor. Particularly, he really liked to embarrass his senators, like I guess the ones that weren't forced to commit suicide. He would like make his senators do really humiliating things, like run alongside his carriage through the streets of Rome. And he would host parties for senators and their wives. And at these parties, he would like pick a wife that he liked. Basically, he just would take these senators' wives and like have his way with them and the senators had to just act like nothing had happened and go along with it because, you know, he's the emperor. He has absolute power. There's even stories about him like, like I guess one time he crashed a wedding and stopped the wedding so that he could marry the bride instead and he like had his way with her for the night and then divorced her the next day there was another account where he took someone's wife forced her to divorce her husband married her and then divorced her six months later i mean pretty much all of these women were were like not allowed to get married again after that and he just did it because he thought it was funny. It was like amusing to him. But you know, a lot of other Roman emperors were really, really evil. But the reason we remember Caligula as being like the mad emperor, I think is because of like how wacky some of the things that he did were. So after he recovered from his illness, I guess he started wearing like women's clothing a lot. And he had for a long time been rumored to be having an affair or like sleeping with his youngest sister, Julia Drusilla. And so when he became emperor, he went out of his way to go ahead and confirm those rumors. And he gave Julia Drusilla the status of the emperor's wife. They were like inseparable, never apart. <laughs> While Caligula was emperor, Julia Drusilla died. And he was so grief stricken when she died that he declared her a goddess and forced the people of Rome to worship her as such. 
He also constantly claimed that he himself was a god. Most Roman emperors were considered gods after their deaths, but Caligula claimed that he was a living god and that he regularly spoke to Jupiter, the god, ma'am, and that he like hung out with Hercules all the time and stuff like that. He also said that he was plagued with constant headaches. So at the height of Caligula's wackiness and recklessness, he found this like old prophecy that said something along the lines of, Caligula has no greater chance of becoming emperor than of riding his horse across the Bay of Bauli, which is just like a big piece of water. And so, I don't know, I guess he was amused by this or maybe offended, I don't even know. I can't tell you why he did what he did next. But basically he had a pontoon bridge made to cross the Bay of Bali. A pontoon bridge is just a bridge that basically you just line up a bunch of boats across the thing and there you go. But he commissioned like all of the boats in Rome to make this pontoon bridge so that he could then spend two days riding his horse back and forth across the Bay of Bali. And like, not only was this weird, but it was also a big issue for like the people of Rome because taking these boats out of commission for the two days that he did caused a grain supply shortage. So they ended up going through this little bout of famine because of these antics. Remember how he was giving everybody food and he was having all these parties and gladiatorial games and whatnot? Well, as I'm sure is not surprising to you, all of that cost money and it caused Rome to go broke basically. So Caligula's answer to this problem of running out of money was to reinstate Tiberius's treason trials. Remember the treason trials? Now what these treason trials basically meant was that the government could at random choose some people to seize their land, all their property and all of their assets. And with the people, they would either exile them to some obscure island somewhere, or he would have them executed. And executions under Caligula were not exactly like French Revolution style. There was nothing like quick and to the point about it, you know? French Revolution with all of its flaws, at least the guillotine was, it was over quick. No, Caligula liked to do public torturings of the people that he was executing. But you know that saying, death by a thousand cuts? It was basically that. He would like kind of just very slowly draw out these torture sessions with these people, like cutting them, stabbing them, but not killing them, just like, just torturing them basically until they died. And it put them in like pins with, with wild animals that just like slowly kind of tear them apart, eat them up. Not only that, but he would sometimes make families watch these torturings happen. And he would like force them to cheer and like be happy about it or else they would like get killed. You know, they would be executed themselves. So there are some tellings of it where it was literally like parents watching their children be tortured and murdered. So not only did he bring back these treason trials, he made them like a hundred million times worse. Now, closer to the end of his reign as emperor, which by the way, was only for four years. He was only emperor for four years. So he managed to fit all of this crazy stuff into one little block of time. But yeah, anyways, closer to the end of his reign, he actually fell in love. He fell in love with this chick named Melonia Saisonia. It was a peculiar pairing to pretty much everybody. This was the description that was given of her. She was described as being neither beautiful, nor young and only interested in her own self-indulgence. Whatever that means. Not a whole lot other than what I just told you is known about Melonia Saisonia, but she did have a daughter by Caligula who he named Julia Drusilla after his late sister wife. And it's said that he, he loved her so much that he would like literally parade her around naked in front of his guards and his senators, like show her off basically. One story goes that he wanted to 
invade Britain and like seize Britain or whatever. I guess at the time it was called Britannia. He took like 200,000 men with him on this like several day long excursion to go seize this territory. And I guess once they got there, he just took them down to the to the shores of the beaches and had his soldiers collect seashells. And he told them that those were the spoils of a great victory. He was not very popular with the Roman public anymore. Not just the Roman public, but his senators, his guards, everybody was like done with Caligula. They'd had enough of his malarkey. There was some like, I think it was a gladiatorial game or something. And basically he was like walking, like turning a corner and was accosted by a whole bunch of men. I think it was the senators is what they say. But he was accosted by these men and stabbed. It was like 23, 24 times, something crazy like that. They, they stabbed him a bunch, they killed him. Maybe it was Julius Caesar that was stabbed 23, 24 times. I don't know, he was stabbed. He was stabbed to death, they stabbed him. Not only that, but they went off and found his wife, Melonia Saisonia, and his daughter, Julia Drusilla, and they killed them too. Why? I don't know. And so all accounts of Caligula's reign, all retellings, sources, whatever, they all cite him as being insane. Crazy, insane, mad, so on and so forth. It's not totally clear if he's referred to as crazy more figuratively than actually literally crazy. But given not just him, but some of his known relatives and their behaviors, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility to think that he may have had some kind of condition, you know? Some of the conditions theorized that he may have had include things like bipolar. Bipolar disorder came up a lot. Also like encephalitis, which is a swelling of the brain and like epilepsy. And I guess given the way that some of his relatives acted in their lives kind of also suggests that there might have been some kind of hereditary condition and i think that that's why bipolar comes up because bipolar is thought to be hereditary should i change my lip hmm no that doesn't work either does it yeah i like that let me know in the comments which of the three lips i tried that you like best with this look so what's the takeaway from Caligula's story? I think just that empirical rule doesn't work. Is that, is that how you say that? Like empires, you know, government systems where one person holds ultimate power doesn't really work. And um, you should make your mental health a priority. Yeah. So I hope that you enjoyed that story. I know that I found it quite interesting. Ancient Rome, very, very fascinating time. And there are other emperors like, not like Caligula. Caligula was kind of one of a kind, but, but the stories about other Roman emperors are actually super duper interesting too. Like Augustus's story is very interesting. Tiberius is kind of interesting. Nero who came after Caligula was very interesting. Julius Caesar, of course, love his salads. Let me know if there's anybody in particular that you would like to hear about next. And let me know in the comments what your favorite time period that we've covered so far is. Do you like ancient Rome? Do you like the Tudors era? Do you like the French Revolution or ancient Egypt? So thank you so much. If you made it all the way to this point in the video, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.